गुड आफ्टरनून फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट स्टैटिक एंड डायनामिक राउटिंग फर्स्ट वी विल सी द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ टूडेज लेक्चर दीज आर द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ टूडेज लेक्चर वी विल सी द एडवांटेज ऑफ स्टैटिक एंड डायनामिक राउटिंग वी विल सी वेयर एंड वेन टू यूज स्टैटिक एंड डायनामिक राउटिंग थर्ड वी विल ट्राई टू क्लियर दिस कंसेप्ट यूजिंग डायग्राम एंड प्रॉपर एक्सप्लेनेशन सो फ्रेंड्स स्ट्रैटिक राउटिंग Static routing is called as manual routing and it is used in small networks. Why to use static routing because of following advantages. Static routing are allowed advertised over a network resulting in better security. As it provide a better security it is very useful to use static routing in small network. Second static routing use less bandwidth than dynamic routing protocols. So for the small area network like lan we are using static routing following are the some disadvantages of static routing initial configuration and maintenance is time consuming as we configure the pcs with ip addresses it is very time consuming so it is not useful than dynamic routing second it is not used in large area network it is not flexible as dynamic routing if any link is failed then there is no other route for transferring the data these are the some disadvantage of static routing next one is dynamic routing it is also called as automatic routing it is used in large area network now why to use dynamic routing for small area network static routing is useful but as the network goes on increasing and wide static routing is not useful there so we are using dynamic routing as it is more flexible the network become larger and it is impossible to keep routing table hence dynamic routing is consistent if one route or path goes on dynamic routing find the second path automatically and it will be beneficial due to this benefit dynamic routing is useful than the static routing over a large area network these are some disadvantages of dynamic routing update are shared between routers thus consuming bandwidth second routing protocol put additional load on router cpu and ram so friend up till now we see the theory part of static and dynamic routing now we try to clear this concept using following topology let me draw one topology i will take one router here i take two switch and i take four pcs here one first pc here is second pc here is third pc and here is fourth pc let me connect those pc with switch and those two switch connected to router connect with router so in static routing what we do we will assign the ip address for those pc manually hence go to desktop and assign the ip address here i assign the ip address of class c you can assign ip address of class a or class b 192.168.1.1 192.168.1.3 this one is the default gateway which is the ip address of router go to second pc and assign ip address 192.168.1.2 192.168.1.3 again this one is the ip address of router now go to router and give interface 0 by 0 to ip as ip address of 192.168.1.3 save the setting now this part is okay if we send the packet from this part to this this pc to this pc it says that it is successful that hence the data packet from send from this pc to that pc 
now go to this pc and assign ip address here i change the network 192.168.2.1 192.168.2.3 here again this is the ip address for interface 0 1 by 0 again i assign the ip address for this as 192.168.2.2 192.168.2.3 and assign interface 1 by 0 to that ip address as 192.168.2.3 now save the setting again this part is ok now this pc can communicate with this pc we try here so let the link has to be established let's try to send the packet from pc0 to pc3 here we get the message successfully transferred also we try to send the packet from pc1 to pc pc1 to pc2 here we get the successfully message so what is what we are doing in static routing we are assigning the ip address manually for those pc and we decide one manually path which is predefined path so it's all about the static routing now we demonstrate about dynamic routing so in dynamic routing these four pcs get the ip address automatically with the help of this router so go to that router enable it go to conf t mode interface fa 0 by 0 and give the command as ip dscp pull pull d dhcp enter now give the network as 192.168.1.0 as we give the network of class c and the default gateway as 255.255.255.0 now enter the command of default router and the ip address of that router 192.168.1.3 now when we go to pc1 and go to dscp it will automatically get the dscp request successful here it get the ip address automatically similarly to pc0 pc1 here the pc1 get the ip address as automatically similarly we do for this Go to in enable conf t int fa 1 by 0. Enter the command ip dhcp pull dhcp network 192.168.2.3. And default gateway 255.255.255.0 and the default ip address of router default router and the ip address 192.168.2.3 and enter now when we go to pc2 again the ip address for that pc is getting the automatically similarly for the pc3 ip address goes to automatic now the communication between those pcs is done here we get the message of successful this one this this much about the dynamic routing i hope you clear the concept of dynamic routing and static routing finally the summary is in static routing we assign the ip address manually and in dynamic routing we as the pcs get the ip address automatically thank you for watching this video